Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So a few weeks ago, I introduced you to this guitar here. This is an H535 from The Heritage. Now, if you want to find out who made this guitar and where they made this guitar, watch my video up there now. But essentially it was made by ex-Gibson employees in Gibson's old Kalamazoo factory using all of Gibson's old 1950s machinery. So in terms of a kind of late 50s 335 reissue, this is about as authentic as it's possible to get. Now, I love this guitar so much. It feels wonderful to play. I love how it looks. The top has an amazing flame to it, which is just stunning, especially in the right light. However, I wasn't quite sold on how this guitar sounded. Now, the main reason for that, I think, were the pickups that are in this guitar. This came with Seymour Duncan 59s, which are kind of path type pickups, but I think they were wax potted. They felt quite compressed under the fingers, the touch sensitivity wasn't quite there, and they were slightly more rolled off up top. Old 335s, to me, always have a really amazing bite to them, which wasn't quite there with these pickups. And as I said, they were a fair bit more compressed than I would like out of a path, so I was kind of using my picking dynamics to control saturation and hitting the guitar hard, it just wasn't quite exploding out the speaker in the way I wanted it to. It was like I had a compressor pedal on somewhere, just limiting those transients. Now, I had a set of the Monty's paths lying around waiting to go into a guitar, which is what I've put in here now, and what an improvement. These pickups sound absolutely spectacular in a 335 style guitar. They are so touch sensitive, you can go from sort of a real roar right down to a whisper using just your picking dynamics even before you go anywhere near the volume controls. They have an amazing clarity to them, that sort of path quack is all there. They're just absolutely stunning pickups and they really revolutionise the sound of this guitar on their own. But then I also swapped out the pots and the caps too. So this guitar now has VI pots in. I use these in all of my guitars. They're wonderful pots. They're kind of Central Lab replicas. So the taper is very correct to an old Central Lab. And they're also slightly overvalued. So these are all about 540k. I did measure them before I put them in. So again, that gives me a little bit more kind of clarity, which I really like in my sound, especially with the thick strings that do sound a little bit darker. Now, I also put in some of the Lux replica Bumblebee capacitors, the proper paper and oil ones. If you saw my capacitor video a couple of months ago, you'll have seen that those capacitors arguably make a tiny difference in certain situations but really not too much. However, being a thin line, I can now look down through the F hole and see a proper paper in oil bumblebee, which makes me happy. So I think that's a reason to put those caps in, even if they arguably do or don't make a difference to the Sonics. I think they make a little bit of difference. Now, I was going to stop there because the guitar was sounding absolutely wonderful, but I did also decide to go the full hog if I'm going to be restoring it to 50 spec and treat it to a new set of hardware from Faber. Now, two reasons why I did that. Firstly, I much prefer the look of an ABR1 type bridge on a guitar such as this. The Nashville bridges are a bit wider, they just look a little bit cumbersome on an old style Gibson. So the ABR1 looks better, in my opinion, but also the Faber stuff is absolutely vintage correct in terms of materials. So the stock tail piece is an incredibly lightweight piece of aluminium. The studs and the bushings are steel. The ABR1 has nickel, nickel plated brass saddles, which is correct. The thumb wheels are nickel plated brass. The only thing that isn't vintage correct, because by definition it can't be, is the posts that the bridge sits on. Because on the old Gibson, they didn't use any inserts. They were just threads screwed directly into the top of the guitar. Now this guitar was obviously made to work with a Nashville type bridge so I have to use the Faber adapter inserts to be able to use an ABR1. So by definition that bit can't be vintage correct but it all sounds amazing and it did add a little bit more kind of air and sustain to the guitar. So this guitar is now sounding as good as it looks I think. So what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to go anywhere near my pedal board. I'm going to plug into a pairing of amps I wouldn't usually use but absolutely crank them and just control all of the saturation on the fly using picking dynamics and the volume controls. So the amps I'm going to use today are a Cornell Romany Plus which is a kind of 10 watt tweed champ with a 12 inch speaker and I'm going to run it with the EQ Defeated which makes it super middly and honky just like an old champ would have been and I'm going to absolutely dime it. 
Now I'm going to pair that amp with my Dr. Z DB4, which is a much sort of darker, thumpy Marshall type amp with a real thick low end on it. And I'm not going to dime that because it's so loud that these unpotted pickups were sort of squealing with microphonic feedback. So I'm going to turn that about two thirds of the way up, pair it with the Cornell, and as I said, just control the saturation using the volume controls and my picking dynamics because it's so touch sensitive. I love controlling the gain on the fly and it works, this, this guitar now works so well into cranked amps. It just sounds divine. So without further ado guys, let's see how it sounds.